This simple experiment shows two of the principles used in my theory. The air pressure on the surface of the water is greater than the pressure of the water in the glass. This allows the water level to be elevated and for objects to float to the top from below. Demonstrated here with matchsticks. Now to scale up the experiment. Even with a much larger glass container, pressure is still in effect and raises the water level. We know that certain things will float in water, such as matchsticks. Pencils and a cork. This is a piece of limestone tied to a bundle of bubble wrap. There is enough bubble wrap to lift the limestone effortlessly to the top of the glass container. Now let's scale it up again. This experiment has been designed to demonstrate the basic principles of the water shaft described in Chris's theory. The experiment consists of a tube filled with water from top to bottom and angled to match that of the Great Pyramid. Both ends of the tube are submerged in tanks of water that represent the pyramid precinct and the upper channel. There are also three locks installed in the tube. If all three locks are open, the water will escape, so it is vital to keep one lock closed at all times. Luke, Chris's son, is going to demonstrate how easy it is to send the limestone blocks to the top of the water shaft. We use three limestone blocks, again floated using simple bubble wrap. Luke closes the bottom lock and then opens the middle lock, allowing the blocks to float effortlessly to the pyramid construction site. Now for something bigger. This is a large, long piece of limestone rock that will be floated using cedar wood instead of air. Even though this object is large enough to fill the diameter of the tube, it still climbs steadily to the top. This experiment has demonstrated the basic principles behind the theory that can be found in Chris's brand new book, The Pyramids of Egypt. How were they really built? <laughs>